You are now listening to Two Dudes in Their Thirties with Adam and Greg. They're gonna talk about stuff, and you're gonna listen. Okay, got it. Good. Let's start the show. Hell yeah! So where are you right now? We're in Oakhurst, California. We are kind of in between the Sequoia National Park and Yosemite National Park. Sitting in my car on the side of the road, man. We want to bang this out. <laughs> Getting the intro uh, <clears throat> knocked out in, in, in the commute back to the Northeast. And you're a day in. Your tummy hurts, yeah. but we don't need to talk about that. Um <laughs> <laughs> So a, challenging. A, I guess a. Let's talk. Let's just talk about the sequoias first. I mean, that's pretty sweet. So you guys had some pretty awesome shots too. I think we we put one up on Instagram today. But um, talk a little bit about that. First time there yeah, for you guys so, or no? Yeah, it was the first time that we were really on the West Coast, like exploring any of the national parks. They're beautiful. If you ever have a chance, sequoia is definitely it's a, it's it's incredible. These these trees are like magical, humongous. Doesn't even like describe like how big they are they tower people and there's like oh on the picture maybe you'll see like person looks i don't know just they're just being dwarfed and that's actually what been like one of my goals in life like or on my bucket list is like to be dwarfed by like the the sequoias and the redwoods so i'm excited to to keep going and, and check out some more that's pretty sweet so what are you guys doing next uh so today we're gonna go hit up yosemite and try to do a little bit of hiking um I don't know, just, just explore everything. There's so much to see, so. Yeah. So you're in California yeah. now, and then, like, what's the next couple of days look like for you guys? Yeah, so I think after, we'll probably sleep out Yosemite and check out Yosemite again tomorrow, and then uh, go to San Francisco, check out San, San Francisco for a day or two, cool. and, and then kind of go up the coast to to the Redwoods in Oregon, Washington, and, and keep going. Nice. All right, so you you sent me a, a text, some text this morning about your hotel experience. Why don't you give me the uh, the full backstory on that, and then uh, oh kind of tell everybody what happened there. So, so you know, like anytime you try to plan something like this, nothing is going to go right. <clears throat> so we just said we're going to do things like night by night, basically, and and we'll we'll book it kind of like on the way. So. We booked our hotel last well, night. Well, because you're going gonna to camp and stuff and do that, right? So you don't necessarily want to book out hotels ahead of time. You're just going to kind of figure it out whenever you get to each place, right? Exactly. So we were leaving the Sequoias last night. We're pulling in towards like Fresno, California, which is is probably the filthiest, grimiest city I've ever been in in my oh, life. It was, it was Sorry, horrible. Fresno listeners, but what are you going to do? <laughs> no, they understand, I'm sure. So we, we pull in. We like book it on, on booking.com and get there it's non-refundable pull in and it's like wait, wait what was the name of the place uh, should we say that maybe we shouldn't say that was it a was it a it wasn't like a chain yeah it was it was days in it was horrible oh, it was okay you can say yeah it. you'll say that then okay. yeah i'm saying that. i don't you care I'm, I'm, I'm definitely just telling people not to stay there <laughs> we we pull in and there's there's two ladies of the night <laughs> walking around in like no no clothes literally no clothes you see like see everything it's all exposed and i'm like this is not going to be good in my mind i already know this is going to be like a rent by like by the hour establishment so (laughs) i go inside i like hesitant to even to even get the key i walk in and my wife and i's jaw dropped there's like mold all over the place there's stains like the carpets are just like filthy it looks like somebody just (laughs) just like spilled urine all over the place <laughs> when you sent me a couple of those pictures it was like it was it was pretty much like it looked like a crime scene i mean it did i i literally in my mind I, i'm going to assume that touch. there was multiple at, at least misdemeanors uh have taken place in that room oh yeah i mean say the least, even man. the cleanest hotel Maybe. rooms are kind of disgusting when you think about it i mean so it had to have been had to have been at least one murder in that place so no joke okay so what happened from there so my wife and I are like, ah, uh, so disappointed. Like it's, it's like eight 30 at night. We just want to go to bed. And I'm like, I'm looking online, anything else, anything else like close by. So we found another hotel and, and thank God, like it worked out, but 
we're still. Uh, if I don't even get re- refunded, I don't care. Like I, I just did not want to put my wife and I through that. Just couldn't get, stay there. Something. No, no, it was horrible. The bedspread looked like I, it might have been like mm, twenty-seven years old. <laughs> it was terrible, man. I'm gonna put. Can I put a picture on our on our Instagram just so people get a gist? I'm yeah, like, put it in the story. It looked like <laughs> it looked like a circus. It was terrible. Yeah, not good. Not good. Well, hopefully it smooths out from there, and uh, you know, and and the and your little stomach feels better because uh, you you don't want to necessarily be run into the uh, the bathroom when you're on a road trip because uh, you never know what you're going to get there either. So <laughs> hopefully things uh, hopefully things smooth out for you guys. Um, Thank you, dude. Do you want to um do you want to talk about oh okay so for people that are new here this is this is the podcast this is two dudes in their thirties Adam is uh, on the road back to the northeast and I'm Greg and I'm I'm in Albany and it's April it's April fourteenth right now so we're recording this on the Saturday before it goes live and it's gonna sleet and or freezing rain here today at some point so that's fun for April fourteenth. Um, but we talked to, um, we talked to Kyle Finn Dempsey, uh, earlier this past week and, um, and, uh, yeah, Adam, do you want to talk a little bit about how you kind of came across this and what this, what this yeah. guy's all about? Yeah. He's a really cool kid. Well, guy, obviously. And he's a kid to us. We're old. Yeah, he's a little bit younger. He's like probably in his mid twenties <laughs> and he's, he's got a really cool thing going. He's, he's like a photographer, storyteller. He does YouTube videos. Uh, Trout and Coffee is his channel, and that's what I came across first. I was like, "This kid is awesome!" Like he he uses drone footage and everything, and he's he's really good at it. So I reached out to him. He said, "Yeah, totally. I'll be I'd be game to talk." And uh, yeah, we had a really good conversation just about his his whole like Instagram and and how he's kind of built his photography into like branding, and he's making a really good living off of it. So. Yeah, it's a it's it's a good podcast for people that are interested in just social media in general and sort of how to monetize. Um, and he's also a guy that's from like forty minutes away from where we're kind of from. Um, so that that connection was was kind of cool. And I'm sure that I mean we're both you know we didn't even really get into this, but you and I are both we we both have a New England connection ourselves. I mean, I was born in New England in Vermont. My parents grew up. You know, New Hampshire. I have I have family that's over in like Greenfield, Mass, and and that area, which is not far from where he is right now. And then a lot of your family, or the majority of your family, is from like the Pittsfield area, right? Or uh, yeah, Great Barrington, yeah, have, something like that. Yep, both both of them. Yeah, I have my grandma still lives in Pittsfield, and and aunts and uncles, and in uh, Great Barrington and in Lenox. So yeah, our, all of our families. Yeah. From that 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 way. Yeah. So um. So that was cool. So we did have a, <laughs> we had some technical issues in this one. Um. For whatever reason, my Skype connection was horrendous, and uh, it was we we, it's we almost we almost struggled through it. We struggled through it. We struggled through it. I was like, I, I'm, it's fine now. Like Adam and I are talking right now, and there's no problem whatsoever. But I was like four seconds delayed on the conversation. So like when I was trying to jump in and ask a question, I was cutting people off and it just got all weird. And then you could hear like 10 seconds of what I was saying and then it would cut out. So I did the edit already on the interview on the, on the conversation. And, uh, I think overall it came out really good. Um, but you know, you're going to hear a couple little blips here and there. So we apologize for that, but we're going to keep kind of tightening that up. And I think, you know, all things considered really good information here, really kind of laid back, chill guy, I had a fun talk with him and, uh, yeah, it ends up being, it ends up being all good. So. So uh, let's get right into it. Here comes uh, the interview with Kyle Dempsey. Hey, what's going on? What's up? How are you, man? Pretty good. How are you doing? Doing good. So, like, I'm in San Diego. Greg is in New York. He's in Albany, and and you're in Western Massachusetts. Yeah, I'm probably like. 40 minutes from him, something like that. Nice. So, uh, Greg, you kind of want to just give him a rundown, kind of how, how the show usually goes? Sure, yeah. So, um, well, thanks for being on with us, first of all. We appreciate it. So, um, we've been, this is going to be our 10th episode of the podcast, and we, um, you know, this is kind of just a show reaching out to people that seem like they kind of got an interesting story. You know what I mean? They got interesting things going on. Um, they're sort of striking out on their own, doing their own things. Kind of uh, talk, talk to some people that have been entrepreneurs, that have been some people that have been doing van life. I mean, you're you're pretty huge on Instagram, so I'm sure you've seen some of those accounts. Um, I think Adam had come across your stuff originally and, and then saw some of the videos on YouTube and was like, hey, let's reach out and talk to this guy. And then obviously you have that, that Western 
New England connection. And him and I kind of both do as well. So you're, you're close to us. So we just figured, what the hell, let's reach out and see if you want to talk. And you were gracious enough to respond. So we figured, hey, let's, let's get you on the line and chat for a couple minutes. Right on, right on. So let's get into your background a little bit. You, um, you grew up in Western Massachusetts. We, we kind of touched on that. And uh, I guess like you now are, are like huge in Instagram and you're, you're kind of stepping out in YouTube and trying to push that. Um, but kind of give us a little bit of a background in, in how you got to where you're at right now. So it, the media side of my life started in high school. Um, I bought this little microphone from Best Buy. Came with a, like a preamp. It was like a Scarlet kit. And a buddy of mine, this was like right when iPhones were, I think we were on the the two, like the 3G or something. It was like a couple iPhones in. Cool apps were starting to come out. And this kid like did this little rap song on one of these apps that could auto-tune your voice. And I was like, that's dope. I tried it out. And then I was like, it's like, I'm just going to go get a microphone and like do some real raps. And I started like rapping and making songs. And I would, I would uh, go and find like old Ninth Wonder beats on YouTube, like all these old hip hop, like really cool beats. Um, and I would just start like busting out these songs in my bedroom. And then I'd make CDs and I'd like sell them in high school and hand them out and stuff. And there was like other people that kind of rapped, but I was like, wait a second, I should do my own photography and video stuff to go along with the rapping. Um, and I think I, uh, one of the first cameras I ever used for video was like a Sony 720p HD little like flip out screen deal. Um, and I would like, I would film like these really corny, funny, uh, little videos for my rap songs and stuff. And, uh, and so yeah, that was high, that was like 2010 was when I graduated. So from like 08 ish up was when I started to really get heavy into media. Um, and then I I went to college and I didn't really know what I was going to do. I started uh, I was like I want to do communications or something along those lines. And uh, I flipped around from a couple of different schools studying stuff and then. Finally landed at a cooking school, but I was studying advertising, <laughs> Johnson and Wales in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. Nice. And they actually, pretty uh, kick-ass advertising program. They like they usually place nationally in the competition and stuff. And I was on that team, the advertising team, and I started learning all about advertising from like the strategy and the creative side, like everything that goes into it. And that was when. I really started to get into photography and, and video work. Um, we had to do like commercials for our ads. So I was in my twenties, that early twenties, like when it really, I was like, Whoa, I love this. I love doing the visual side of all this. And, um, should I just keep going and tell you the whole story up to now or what? <laughs> <laughs> so like, like you started your, um, you started like working at like a TV kind of studio doing, doing video and, and editing and stuff for them. You said, um, and one of your movies as well. Yeah, yeah. The the uh so that came after college. That was like my first real world job. And it was like that was where I uh, I learned a lot about how to get things done when it comes to filming cuz like when you're working for the news and you're just they don't give a shit about creativity or whatever. They're like right. you got to get out there get the story done. And so like the strategy when you're doing a news story is like, "All right, we need B-roll. We need like five seconds on this, five seconds on this, five seconds on this, just these still shots. And like at the time it seemed so monotonous and horrible. And now I use that technique just to like get YouTube videos done essentially, like to fill in B roll and stuff. So it's like cool. The things you learn from jobs that at the time or whatever, you're like, this is horrible. Um, but that was, yeah, that was a cool like start to, uh, just modern media and actually having like a real job in the real world and seeing how annoying that type of stuff can be. <laughs> like, local news station is not the prettiest place to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like transitioning from that into like kind of finding your own kind of passion in life and, and kind of making your own path in life. Like how did you kind of step out into where you're at now with like Instagram and, and, and YouTube and, 
you know, making uh, music and things like that, just being like more creative and following passions that you have in your heart? Um, so I don't, so music has like always been there. It's just, I keep it kind of on the back burner. I'd never like want, have gone full force or even truly wanted to like make that the only thing I focus energy on. But so that's been there the whole way. We can talk more about that. But in terms of, uh, like trying to figure out how to get paid by doing something passionate for and that I love was, uh, I, I had been on <coughs> active on Instagram since, uh, like around college I was doing, I think I did my first drive across the country my junior year in college. And that was where I started taking pictures and posting them and, and like nothing was happening. I was just having fun. It was just like a regular account, whatever. And, and then by the time the summer of that I was in the news, this was, I had that job at the news 2015. So I'd been out of college for like just a, a year or two, like a year and a half. And I was posting pretty actively that summer and things were starting to get a little bit of traction. And then I was like, I hate this job. I got to quit. And then I traveled across the country and I filmed like this little YouTube series and was posting a lot then as well. And my account was starting to get a little more traction and, but it wasn't that much. It was just like nothing I could have made a living off of or anything. And it was a little bit disappointing, but it was still so fun to like make that YouTube series and, and go out and just go for it. And, uh, and then when I got back from that trip, it would have been like December, 2015. So then it was transitioning into 2016 and I didn't really know what I was going to do. Didn't have a job. And, uh, I had worked for this local tomato sauce maker that's like in my area since high school. I'd been like on and off with him on the summers, stuff like that. And I ran into him. He just crashed. He just slid on ice. It was winter. It was like January or something. He slid on ice and crashed his truck. And I was like driving up to go to the pond to take some pictures or something. And I was like, Mike. And he was like, Kyle. (laughs) And then he was like, can I get a ride? And then we started talking and I, uh, I started working for the tomato sauce company again. So this was this was like the spring, winter, spring of 2016, and, and I was still I was Instagram was getting a little more active. I was spending a lot of time on it, and then the real transition happened. Um, and I went on a trip to Minnesota, where I have a guy that I'm good friends with that I record music with. I went out just for a week as like a vacation to record some music. I ended up staying a lot longer and then I ended up quitting my job with the tomato sauce guy. And I was just like, well, actually before that happened, I guess I have to say I uh, found these cabins near my job. I was like, I was crushing tomatoes one day and um, I went out for a lunch break, found these cabins at like a local camp and took like a few pictures in there, posted them. And they just started blowing up on Instagram. And that was like when, that was like the first click of the gears that I was like, whoa, what the heck is going on here? Mm-hmm. And, but that was only like a month or so before, like I ended up actually quitting and being like, all right, I'm going to try this. I'm just going to see if I can, I know that if I can like get some traction on here, I can figure out a way to make money. And I would always tell my tomato sauce boss that I was always like, you got to watch. Like, I know I can do this. I can figure something out with this. And he was always like, He's like, all right, I doubt it, but this is interesting. Uh, he's like, he's amazing. He was like my business mentor. He's such a cool dude. Um, so this would have been like May 2016, right before the summer hit was when I officially quit my job and was like, I'm going to try and get paid through my passion. And the first company that I got uh, an offer from was... Uh, well, actually, one of the first was Art of Visuals. I'm wearing their hoodie right now. Um, they wanted, they asked me to sell uh, like Lightroom presets through their account, so that was, or through their website or whatever. And that was like a cool, like, whoa, holy crap! Okay, I can get paid monthly for this. So that's something. It wasn't much, but it was enough to like maybe stay alive. And then Bradley Mountain, who's a backpack company, um, they were like, hey, we'll give you a backpack and a couple hundred bucks if you want to take some photos for us. I still work with them to this day. Like, and that was like the initial thing that was like, whoa, I got a deal. Here we go. Like, let's go. <laughs> and, but that was the start. It was summer 2016 in the beginning. 
And so thinking back on some of that, um, were you like, I know you said that you put the first stuff up when you first went across the country and you were like a little disappointed that it didn't really take off. So was this something that you kind of had in the back of your mind that you thought could work for a while, like the ultimate goal? Or like when you were coming up, even as a kid, like what did you actually think you wanted to do? Or was it maybe just work for yourself and figure it out? And then Instagram happened and it was like, okay, this could be the avenue. I just knew that if I could, I, I, I had like a vision for like a, a brand of content just based on how I grew up and like there's just it really originates from like these feelings that I had growing up along the river and at the ponds and stuff that like I knew not a lot of people had growing up in that if I could figure out a way to manifest them and like share them with other people that they could be valuable and I I and I knew Instagram was the easiest way that I could do it I always saw YouTube as like this like uh, this far mountaintop where it's like I know people get paid and make a living through that, but that seems like crazy. That's like so much more work or something. It just seemed intangible. But I was like, Instagram, I posted one picture and I saw these results. If I just keep doing that, then I think something will happen. And and then it comes back to like, I wanted to make, like whereas like a lot of people use Instagram, like they're photographers and it's showcasing their work. I was always excited. I want to make, sick ads like my background's in advertising i want to that's my focus is like getting the opportunity to work with a brand and then just doing something super dope for them that no one can think of or whatever mm -hmm. like how do, you, how do you feel like you've built your influence kind of on social media um over time like uh or how do you feel like you've you've partnered with brands now like um is it something that you reach out to these people like initially or is it like people have always reached out to you like how does that work I, I've never, I've reached out to like one or two brands if I really am like, wow, that's really dope. Or like, that could be a sick alignment. I, but usually it, it all happens so fast that I don't even have the time to reach out. I'm trying to catch up with the ones that are reaching out to me, but like, um, so like it, it'll start with like, they'll reach out. It, there's a lot of different ways. A lot of brands and you, you know right away by the first email if they know what they're talking about, if they've done this before, worked with an influencer, or if they're just, just like, a lot of people try and get stuff for free. So it's like, then you got to explain that, like, I can't pay my bills with your water bottle or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's always like, but, like, it's such a relief when you get a brand that actually understands it and, they, and they're and they ready to work and they know that they're going to have to have a decent budget, depending on your size of influence or whatever it is that they want you to do um but it'll yeah usually just starts they'll reach out with initial initial email and either have a plan in place already like i just got um i'm doing something with uh, cape cod potato chips and they're like uh we want three posts that are going to promote the launch of our new russet potato chips so like they already had that plan in place whereas somebody like nature valley who i did a campaign for not long ago was like we don't know what the hell we want, but we want to work with you. What are your ideas? And I'm like, all right, let's do this. So it, it can go either way. And it's it's just cool when the brand is like they're working with you and not using you as a pawn or whatever. Because it can, it can get annoying. It really can. In terms of how you actually do this thing, I mean, I'm sure everybody would want to know, like, how do you have whatever, almost 400,000 or whatever followers you have on Instagram? What were the factors or the reasons and how did it happen? Um, the way it did or the way it has for you fairly quickly. I mean, you're a guy like in his mid twenties, that's, you know, doing pretty good with this, obviously. So how did it kind of happen from your perspective? For sure. Um, I'd say that the most important thing you can do is to be consistent. And that's something I haven't been lately. And I've been t like, I've compared to periods of time where I've been ultra consistent. It's not, it's non comparable to growth rates. Um, but like the biggest thing that I did was you find your avenue, you stay in it, you be as consistent as you can, and then you once you kind of know who you are and what you're doing within your niche or whatever, then you can kind of like bump the walls and and start to rattle the cage a little bit. And you get you got to be comfortable. People got to know who you are, what you're about, what you're providing to them, and then then you can start to grow from there. But like they got to know, they got to be able to count on you for something, whatever it is. So once you start creating this consistent content, 
it's just like it's you, you you start to see certain elements that like either work well or that people really enjoy and then you got to like the way i approach the content is like i want to give people a moment of peace in their day whatever it is i want to give them uh, a little fantasy like a little escape or whatever for 5 minutes and then there's other people that provide content that's like you know, adrenaline based or content that's funny, like memes. The universe wouldn't function without memes these days. You know, it's like everyone's got their different niche for content that they provide. Um, and then in terms of growing, so you you got your little niche and then within that niche, there's accounts that simply promote the best of that niche. So for me, it was um, a lot of outdoor accounts, a lot of planet Earth um, cabins, uh, like hiking, wilderness, whatever, gentleman channel type stuff. And these guys have hundreds of thousands, millions of followers. And when you create the best content in that niche and they share it over and over again, all of their followers are like, where's it coming from? And then they go to you. Mm-hmm. So the biggest thing that happened for me when I posted that first cabin photo that really took off, Country Living Magazine reposted it. They got like a couple million followers. Um they didn't tag my name, though. I was really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be too. <laughs> so that's pretty much how it works, is you is you want to create content that these bigger accounts are going to share, and then it all reciprocates back down to you. Nice. As a creator, you're just like a super creative individual, but as a creator, like, is there a certain platform you enjoy more, like using YouTube over Instagram or Instagram over YouTube? Or, or I don't know. What, what, what is your thoughts on that? My favorite platform above and beyond is YouTube right. just because it's the most accessible way to produce a film. Like Hollywood is, doesn't matter. Like YouTube is the new Hollywood. You can make anything you want at any time about anything. There's no rules. There's no guidelines. It's, there's so much freedom within it, which can also be like overwhelming. Cause you're like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Like, I don't know how I want to do it. But, um, in terms of like, I go through phases too. Like, I I love Instagram and I think it's a great way to share content. Um, but it can be, I mean, everyone knows that Instagram, it's the highlight reel. It's yeah. the best of the best. And then you get into this debate between like, is it authentic or blah, blah, blah. Like, I just want to post shit that I like. And it's like, but if you run it from a business standpoint, like you got to be providing value to people. And then uh, it's, it's all, I don't know. It all seems like it could get so tainted, but for me right now, YouTube is a, is a platform where I don't feel like I need to really appeal to anyone. I can just do what I want to do the way I want to do it. And it's like that total freedom of expression. Um, and, and you need that or else you just get bottled up and you could explode, I guess. Yeah, honestly, looking at your YouTube channel, it seems very authentic. It's very like – like when I reached out to you – I and initially saw your channel. It was very like peaceful tones to it. Like it was very like calming – it was, it was really, I hope that everyone does check out, um, <clears throat> your trout and coffee, uh, YouTube channel because I don't know. It's honestly, it's like one of my favorites. I've been going through them all in the last like two weeks or so. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's awesome. Thanks man. Yeah. So how do you do, um, negative side of social media? I mean, with the following, the size you have, mm-hmm. how about all the bullshit that comes with the comments and just the, I mean, there's just a bunch of assholes out there. I mean, quite, quite frankly. So how about dealing with that? <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, that's a daily thing. It's, it's, it's pretty funny. I mean, I'm at this point right now where I'm daily. I am like trying to develop thick skin just for the future. Cause I know if this is going to be my career, I have to have as thick a skin as I can possibly imagine. So like I'm pretty used to shrugging off, people and stuff for the most part but you you get comments that are mean and then you're like all right whatever fuck them like that's typical but then you get comments that are weird or that they're like not they're they're, i don't know there's so many weird people on the internet i mean it's just like the things that people say they're like mind-boggling sometimes and it might not even be mean or rude but it's just like I don't know. But the biggest thing for me, it's not even a mean thing. It's like the way that I post my content was a lot of cabins and a lot of camping areas and stuff. And everyone just 
needs to know where it is, how to get there, and, like, they expect you to, like, write them an itinerary or something, and it's, like, it's, like, I would love to help everyone, for sure, like, I'd love to answer everyone and tell them all the best places, but, like, at the same, like, I can't give away my favorite spots, number one, and, like, I can't spend all my time telling, like, writing free itineraries and stuff like that, I wouldn't get anything done, and it's, like, the, there's a lot of people, most people get that, but then the people that, like, they don't understand, like, how many other people are also asking that at the same time, it can get frustrating, but, um, I was a lot more, uh, what's the word, I guess, sensitive to the mean comments, like, in the summer of 2016 when I first started, because I was, like, you know, you're not, you, when you first start, like, you, you've never been blasted on social media because it wasn't a thing or whatever and it's like it's weird it is weird to have someone you don't know doesn't know anything about you to say to assume some shit that isn't true or to try and like write this story about you that is completely false and it can it can get in your head i've had days where like i'll just have these stupid comments that i know don't mean anything and they're just swirling around in my head and it's but it's it's all part of developing the thick skin and uh like today i woke up to a what was it? Uh, it was some comment like telling me like it was about my YouTube. It was like I love your videos, but I think you're promoting uh, like hipsters to buy cabins rather than showing the true hardship of owning a cabin. You should change. You should do videos about what it's like to really own a cabin. And, and I started to type. I was like, that's not why I make videos. And I was like, I, I don't need to prove myself or explain myself to someone. I just delete it. And that's the best thing. That's to any creative. That's the best advice I can give you is to ignore it and keep doing what you're going to do anyway. Cause it's just not what you can't, you don't need to prove yourself to anyone about anything. You don't need to waste your energy. Um, but that's a good question. I like that. Just kind of following up on that, I guess, like what, what do you think these people like, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think they do all day? Is it is it their goal to like <laughs> just troll people, or do you think this is like true stuff? I mean, you you obviously have been involved in this game for a little while, so I'm sure you have a sense of this a little bit. Like, is it genuine? Do you feel like some of this, or is it just people just have nothing else better to do, and so they're going to go on there and 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 it's a th- it's a thing to like get involved in in you know try to get under somebody's skin on social media. I think it's it's. Um... I think a majority of it stems from just, like, ignorance of not knowing what's actually going on behind the content or or you as a person. But I also think that there's people out there that are just total trolls. I remember I released a video on Christmas Day. Um, it was a YouTube video. And I ended up deleting it because I, 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 it didn't come out right. But this one person, like, immediately commented something like so mean and harsh and it's like it's christmas day how are you sitting home bitter and (laughs) want to spread hate on a day like today like just like to to actually physically type something out that's like mean to try and bring someone else down it's like you just know that usually the people that are wasting their energy on that don't have a passion or something they're trying to build that they would be putting that energy towards otherwise. So it's like, there's definitely trolls and then there's definitely, and then there's people that aren't necessarily trolls, but they just don't understand. And they're, they, I don't know. Yeah. There's all sorts of things. So I know we were kind of emailing back and forth a little bit and you were saying you're moving into a new place. Um, congratulations on that, by the way. And, um, what do you, what do you kind of feel like the future kind of holds for you? So I just got this new place. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's in it's a, a couple of towns over from where I grew up, and it's like like where I grew up is in the middle of nowhere, and like right on a river in the mountains. And you go up the mountain over the hill, and there's this little town. And I'm on this block that's got like below me. I've got like uh, a realtor office, like a dog grooming place, an ice cream shop. There's a restaurant that all my friends have always gone to, and then like three stories up, I've got this. It's an old brick building. It's an old um, mill, paper mill. Um, this town actually makes, it's called Crane and Company. They make a lot of the paper for the money in the world. And it's, and it's in the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts, Crane paper. It's like, it's pretty funny. It's like our, um, claim to fame or whatever. 
And so it's like this brick building. There's a bunch of exposed brick inside, and I've just got this. It's a super dope little setup. It's like I've got – I've actually been – Moving in for about two weeks and buying, I had to buy all new furniture and stuff. Dude, it never ends the shit. You go into Target for silverware, and you come out with <laughs> stupid stuff, fake plants, things you never would have guessed. Um, but I'm, I'm moving into there, and I'm basically setting up a base camp where I'm going to be... I, I, I've always, I felt like I've been behind for, like ever since I started Instagram because I really want to do videos and I'm, I always like shoot more photos than I can process, shoot more video than I have time to edit. And like, I've just got this library of some of the dopest content that no one's ever seen. And it's just been sitting there cooking and like, I'm, I'm so ready to, once everything's set up, I'm in the process of, I somehow deleted my whole Lightroom library. So I'm going, I have like, 10 hard drives over the past two years and I have to go in and individually go through like every day of photos I've ever shot and re-import them back in the Lightroom and like so I'm I, it's like a mess my 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 uh what my sacred like, heart you know computer like my where I make all my money from is just scattered everywhere and uh, so I'm I'm in the process of recultivating that which is going well and should be done within like a week or two in the process of doing of setting up the apartment and then the goal is to um is to just go like pretty full force with youtube i want to do like three or four or five videos a week i want to do and i want to i don't want to do vlogs and and um like basic content i want to do short stories i want to do like three or four minute films that feel like a movie and they're about a specific subject and they have a specific message and i can i can do them in the day knock them out because like I'm just tired of like filming way too much and being like, Oh, it's going to be out tomorrow. And then being like, I couldn't get to it. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Like, I just want to get into a routine when it comes to it. And then, um, while that's all happening, be going through all the photos I've ever shot, picking out my favorites and shooting new content, but kind of putting the brakes on a little bit and, and utilizing the year's worth of stuff that I already have is, is the game plan moving forward right now. And also, I guess I just got a, uh, I have a, a new client that's like um, a bunch of uh, land, they own a bunch of land, and it's like a real estate type thing, and um, so essentially, I guess, while I'm working on YouTube, which I don't make any money from, I can use that to stay alive, I guess is all I was going to say. So it's like that final piece of the puzzle, because people always ask me how I do what I afford to do what I do. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that actually brings paychecks in that no one gets to see. Awesome. So how about like some of your favorite creators out there that you are really into and, and you've been following that you get inspiration from? Do you have any are, like that you're following recently or anything like that? So recently I've been spending, I, I devote like hours a day on YouTube just to watch my favorite creators on there. I have a, all my favorite Instagram ones too. I'll talk about them after but on youtube like casey neistat's always been a favorite of mine of course and he just started his new series called 368 or whatever yep. which is really dope um so i've been following along with that i uh i always check in on this guy cody co who used to be a viner and then he started his youtube channel and he's a comedian he's like so like i'm trying to i'm looking into a couple different genres of content because i love the idea of trying to like mold and or um, pick from from each of them, which is what I did when I first started Instagram, was I looked at my favorite photographers. I like the way he uses colors. I like the way he uses textures. I like the and because like Trout and Coffee as it is now, my YouTube channel is a more of a serious tone, but I do want to add elements of humor and lighten it up and make it more relatable and stuff like that. So I've been doing a lot of research on that type of stuff. Um, Cody Coe's is fantastic. He's got a duty works with named Noel Miller. They're both hilarious. They're out of LA and they just do really funny everyday videos. Um, a lot of younger YouTubers that are just like killing it and making so much money. This girl, Emma Chamberlain, she's like about to hit a million subscribers. She just super stupid vlog type videos, but she absolutely kills it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out why is this so popular? Why is this hitting so hard every time she drops a video? Um, and then there, and there's a lot of young, just 
creators that I don't know that are coming up on YouTube. Peter McKinnon's great. He's he's always killing it. Um, and then over on Instagram, uh, this guy, Emmett Sparling, I mean, he's like every day just completely slaying it. It's like the best pictures from all over the world. One of my favorite dudes I, I've always followed is um, Big Ben. He's out of, I think, Vancouver or something. Um who else is there? This guy, Short Stash. Uh, he used to be in Colorado. He's always he's dope. Um, who else is really good? I always I always forget when I come on the spot when it comes to Instagram, and I'll be like scrolling through my feed and like, oh, Forrest Mankins. He's always been one of my favorites ever. Uh, he's got that old Land Cruiser. He, Alex Stroll has always been a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't been spending as much time on Instagram. I spend most of my time on YouTube these days. Yeah, for sure. I'm kind of jealous, man. You have this one couple that's following you from uh, Sailing La Vagabond. You know, uh, the they're like these awesome sailors. And for whatever reason, I don't know, I, I'm kind of ticked at you because I would love to have them, you know, following me. But that's not going to happen because I'm a nobody. So, <laughs> <laughs> What are they about? I don't, I don't know if I know the name. Um, Sounds kind of familiar, though. This guy and girl, they, they sail the world. They're a really, really cool uh, YouTube channel. And they have their Instagrams also, but I don't know, check them out if you ever get a chance. Sailing La Vagabond. Damn. Wait, what? Uh, I can't find their Instagram. Oh, is it? Okay, Elena C. Yep, yep. And Riley, and Riley, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Where Where do you guys host this, or how does that work? So we have a few different things. We have it on. We host it on Lisbon or Libsyn, I'm sorry. And then we have it on like YouTube. We have it on, um, Greg, Greg, you, you know, all the places we have it on YouTube. Yeah. Apple. I mean, iTunes and Apple podcasts is kind of where yeah. most downloads right now. Um, but we're just, yeah, we're getting started. We only started back in February. So what is it? Wait, I, I, I'm curious because I, um, I want to do like a little podcast with my buddy about music and stuff. So how, what is your podcast called? Like, how did you start it? What, what was the the game plan, I guess? So, like, the game plan was initially Greg wanted to do one on soccer, and then he's like, yeah, I, it just never kind of rolled out. He he had his stuff for, like, a year, a year and a half sitting in his closet, and it never went, like, followed through with it. So then, like, recently he reached out to me. He's like, let's just chat, and, and, and we can bring on, like, people that we're inspired by, people that are interesting, and, and um, people that, I don't know, have, like, cool influence on on i don't know other people or whatever and we'll get these people on we'll we'll interview them and, and speak to them and i don't know kind of go from there so it's, it's kind of like interview based and it's kind of like a way for me and greg c- to connect because we're cross country so we just wanted I, i've been wanting to do a podcast i listen to a podcast wtf with mark Marin, joe rogan etc and i just figured like you know i, I bought the shit i might as well try to like figure out how to do it yeah, so yeah. um we just started kind of talking and we did our first couple where it was really just him and i kind of rambling like we had a a general sense as to what we wanted to do but it was more just us kind of shooting the bullshit back and forth and then it kind of quickly evolved into us just kind of checking out people that we follow on social media instagram youtube people that are like kind of like their own thing entrepreneurs taking a different course in life um just people that we could have like interesting conversations with and sort of bring into the mix um and just learn learn something and maybe help but listen to us kind of learn something from um and just have like good real kind of true conversations uh and there's nothing we don't plan anything really ahead of time and we have technical issues as you can tell uh, <laughs> we barely know what we're doing but we're getting it out every week so you know uh, that's kind of how it's been so and you're moving know. back to Albany? Yeah, so so my wife and I literally we packed our car today. We got like our, our little French bulldog who's who's been like sick. And we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be like driving cross country for like three weeks, man. We Three weeks? I don't know how this is gonna go in all honesty. We're 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 gonna head up into like the Sequoias tonight. We're gonna kinda camp out kinda before we get there. Uh, just north of LA, hopefully, so we miss that traffic in the morning. Go in, check out the Sequoias, um, up to Yosemite kind of go out to the redwoods which you've been to recently right tell me tell me how was yeah. the redwoods oh my god dude they give me a feeling i, I don't get anywhere else i want to spend more time there because it's always brief you know 
I want to go back. Yeah. That. Oh my god. Wait. So are you gonna still do the podcast while you're on the road? I'm gonna try, man. So like sitting at Starbucks or whatever, and and we have like <laughs> we have like three, two or two or three lined up for like next week. So. Oh, do you just pump them out? Like, will you do like three in one week and then space them out? Basically, yeah. What we try to do is get like a few ahead, and then we put them out once a week, like weekly on a Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like. I don't know if you listened to the to the two that I sent you. If you even listened to any of them, but um, I don't know. It's it's been fun. It's been a cool way for Greg and I to connect and to reach out and meet cool people. In all honesty, how have you seen the response in terms of getting it out there? Like, are people listening and comment like and talking? Um, on the community side, that's I think a little bit tougher to grow on like a platform where it's it's like a podcast, you know, where people are just listening. Cause there's not like mm-hmm. a, I don't know for me, I'm like a visual person. Like I love YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I don't even think I even listened to a podcast before like starting this up with, with, with Greg, but I've, I've, mm-hmm. I've kind of branched out a little bit and, and, and listened to them and I see the importance of them. Like when you're driving on road trips, it's, it's perfect. You throw it on, you don't have to like think you just, I don't know, listen, but we, it's, it's tougher to, to, I think connect with, with like your, your listeners on a platform like this. Um, oh, we've had some, some people reach out to us though. And I think like when we, when we reach out to like people for interview side of things, it's hit or miss. Like we've, we've, we've put out a lot of, a lot of, um, like emails and feelers to different people. And uh, some people are actually like super divas, you know, you've been awesome. You've been, you've like, <laughs> I don't know, you've, you've, you've been willing to come on and I don't know, you've, you've had like I don't know, not like a laundry list. You didn't, you you had no requests. You know what I mean? Like we have to talk about this or anything. You've been super open, and we've appreciated that for sure. Some people are are tougher though, like that. They want to talk about certain things or whatever. Uh yeah, or they'll only give you like, like uh, I don't know, like some some people are like very limited. Like oh, I only have like ten minutes. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And- so the no- usual length is like a half hour to 45. Is that what you shoot for? Yeah. Like usually like Greg and I will kind of like open up. We talk beforehand or whatever. And then uh, we have like our kind of like music intro or outro or whatever. And then like we have somebody come in, we do our interview, talk for a while and shoot, shoot the shit. And then we kind of wrap up afterwards. Got you. Yeah. Got you. What do you think you're, you're going to do with yours, with, with your podcast? What are your thoughts on that? So, yeah, that's, I'm, uh, I've been trying to study podcasts because I don't exactly know the format or where it's released or how to necessarily build a community around it or whatever. Um, but me and one of my good friends who is – it's a cool combo because, like, I have my job or whatever, and he's just, like, he's a very – he's a working man. And so, like, it's this cool dynamic, but we both connect so strongly on music. He always comes over and we listen. we go for a drive and we listen to – the, the new music that's out and stuff. And I thought it'd be cool to, to talk about that. Um, but that would just be like one segment with him. And then I wanted to do stuff similar to like what you guys do, just talking to people that have interesting stories and just shooting the shit, really. I think, like you said, in terms of when you're just driving, there's no, like, either, the more dope content that you can listen to in long form, the better that can just fill that gap. Um, and I like the visual side of it. I want to release like an, every episode on YouTube and have it super aesthetically appealing and make it kind of funny and like sort of skitty and stuff like that. So, but that's, uh, I, I don't, that's why I'm so interested and intrigued is I want to, I just want to learn as much as I can about it. Cause I don't know really where to start or what format. Or, I don't know. You can't do it any worse than we are. <laughs> <laughs> It seems like it's going smooth, or at least like, uh, like, what are you using for a mic? Is that just a condenser, regular condenser mic? Yeah, it just plugs into the USB. Honestly, it's super, super low key, cheap. But I, I think Greg, Greg wanted to jump in here. Um, no. So if you're if you're interested in learning more about podcasting and how to do it, the people that I sort of um, kind of came across were uh, this guy John Lee Dumas and this other guy Pat Flynn. Okay. 
they both have a ton they both have a ton of free resources um so if you just google them go to their websites check them out on youtube i mean literally i watched a, a pat flynn youtube video on how to edit a podcast in garage band how to upload it how to tag it um, how, to, how to get it online or to get the front up. Like, uh, that's how I figured out how to do it. And, you know, with your experience editing video and YouTube, um, I'm sure that the editing piece of it will come pretty quick. I hadn't edited audio or video. So I'm just honestly like learning GarageBand, quite frankly, um, cutting the pieces together and kind of making it, making it work. We're making it our own. Our biggest thing is that we're not trying to act or sound or be like anybody. And so that makes it, I think that makes it authentic. And we've been trying to be just real. Um, we just kind of do our thing. And, and, you know, there's plenty of podcasts out there that do different things that, you know, have it scripted. The ones I like that I kind of tend to um, follow are the ones that are just conversation based, tell a story. Like, and don't get me wrong, I like production value, value too. And I think when Adam comes back here to our area and he and I are able to get in a room together and do some of these, you know, in the same room, it'll, it'll get better. And we're, we'll continue continue to learn but i also think like my buddy blake was on with us last week and what do you say there's like bakers or eaters and so like we're just trying to bake like we're just keep baking and we're going to try to keep you know figuring out the recipe as we go and, and making it better and kind of that's where we're at so that's my my two cents on podcasting i guess <laughs> love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah man actually real quick i guess before you go do you want to you want to share any of the brands you were any of the other brands we missed that you're working with now or anything you got coming up that you want to talk about and then just obviously i'm sure people listening can find you already but just let everybody know kind of where they can see your stuff too for sure uh, um brands actually well i want to i just yeah real quick if i could just say this so i'm working with cape cod potato chips and uh they're a brand that back when i was in college in advertising class we had this project and they were like teacher said you use a brand that you use every day and make a little campaign for them I've eaten Cape Cod potato chips my entire life. I was like, I'm using Cape Cod potato chips. And I made this this little video. Everyone had print ads. They would they were photoshopping the print ads and stuff. And I was in my girlfriend's apartment. I set up a green screen above her little dining area and shot this video. And it's basically the story of uh, this kid that like tries to ask this girl to prom. And he's like, you go to prom with me and he hands her the bag of potato chips and she grabs the bag and she's like, no. And like kisses him on the cheek. And he's like, Haha, I got a kiss on the cheek from Sally Kingston. Like it was all worth it. It's, it's like this super cute little like, um, uh, video. And then I play, I re- recorded a song and played it in the video and stuff. And like it killed in class. It did really well and stuff. And, uh, and so then Cape Cod reaches out to me. This is like five. What is that would have been back in, yeah, at least five years later, and they're like, yo, we want to work with you, and I was like, what? And I was like, no way, this is insane. I emailed them <laughs> the uh, the original video and everything, and they were like, oh my god, this is perfect, and, uh, and then we just, like, s- sort of solidified it today, but I, I got to hop on a phone call with them tomorrow, but that's going to be coming up, so definitely... Uh, keep your eyes out for that because I'm going to do some fun ads for them. I want to really kill it and bring my best work. Uh, and then, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Kyle Finn Dempsey. I've got a secondary one, which is probably even cooler, Secret Life of Huck. Um, and then Trout and Coffee on YouTube. And that's pretty much the only three channels I use. Awesome. Hey, I just want to thank you so much for uh, sitting down with us. We, we just really appreciate your time and, and what you're putting out there. It's really good content. So check out, you know, Kyle Finn Dempsey and the secret life of Hawk on Instagram. Check out his trot and coffee. That's honestly one of my personal favorites right now. So it's just got a really cool vibe, really peaceful, a lot of cool cabins that he's going into. And it's just, it will bring a sense of, of, of peace and wonder and joy into your life. So definitely check that out. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. Talk to you guys soon. All right. Good luck, man. Bye. So that was a great interview with Kyle Dempsey. He's got uh, a really good thing going. I feel like a lot of people our age are kind of trying to do something on the social media and trying to build like a, a network or a community or a way to monetize things. But seriously, that he's, he's, he's really built his brand, his personal brand and his influence. And I, I just thought it was really awesome. It was cool to just learn how, it, how he does it. I mean, I think like you said, People like our age and our generation have dabbled and, you know, people are kind of playing around on there. Some people aren't trying to do it, which is fine, but those that are, I think there's some pretty interesting kind of tips and 
just the story of how he kind of did it was was kind of interesting as well. So you want to hit everybody with his socials one more time? Yeah, his social media accounts on Instagram is The Secret Life of Huck and also Kyle Finn Dempsey. And he's got a, a YouTube channel that I definitely recommend. It's Trout and Coffee. Cool. So thanks everybody again for checking us out this week. If you if you were new, if you came in through through uh, you know following Kyle, um, thanks for for listening. Uh, if you like what you hear, go ahead and subscribe to the show. That'd be awesome. We're at Two Dudes Thirty on most social media, probably most heavily on Instagram right now as well. Um, you can also email us at Two Dudes Thirty. So that's the number two, the word dudes, the number thirty at gmail dot com. Um, we'd love to hear from you, and we'll keep uh, bringing new people back every week. We're going to wrap it up again this week, like we always do. This is Enigmatic Heart from Clifton Park, New York, and we will uh, we'll check you next week. See you, man. Travel safe. Thanks, dude.